Well, there's a lot more interest than I expected in the parts video I put up this morning. So I thought I'd add some additional information that I think uh, I, I should have included in the last video, but I was feeling really bad yesterday and I was concerned that it would be long and boring. And it wasn't as long as I feared and seemingly not as boring as I expected. So let's talk about parts in general and multiples and pricing options. Let's start with these uh, FNT 5050s, dual 5050, 500 volt caps. These are for the super base. I've got six. I need six. Order four more to reach the next bulk pricing discount. So 6570 versus, versus 105. So in this case, if I were stocking up to do a lot, a lot of Marshalls, I probably would be better off buying 10. I'm just going to stick with the, the uh, six here. Now, I've got um, things to say about these caps later. Let's talk about these MODs. Uh, I've got two and three. That's for one super. I'm doing five super reverbs. So let me uh, do 10 of those and 15 of those. Now, 15 more to reach the next bulk pricing discount. 10 more to reach the next bulk disc, uh, pricing discount. I'm going to get 10 more of the 20 microfarads. I use those an awful lot. Let's see, my price per goes from 185 to $1.65. So I didn't save a, a lot, but I use a lot of the 20 microfarads. Pretty much every Fender amp uses those. Uh, so I'll just have uh, 10 extra for my uh, next amps that come in. Let's see here on the... Uh, uh, 21 series, uh, ASM series here, the 22 microfarads, 63 volts for the fender. I need 30 of those, six per amp, five amps. Oops, sorry, that's it. The orange drops are for a later part of the, the video. The, uh, I've already checked the price difference at Mauser, and this is still a better buy to get these 30 here versus 30 of them at Mauser. All right, so that's, Scaling this one up. Now let's go to the Mauser and scale it up. All right, here we go. I need at least five of these at $1.24 each. So $6.20 for five. Let's see what 10 would cost. $8.46. For $2 more, basically, I can get twice as many. So I'm going to order 10 of these. People have asked about that in the previous video, and I almost included this information, and I didn't for length, but it's really crucial to know, as you can see. And I need five of those 47 microfarads. So 1335. What happens if I go to 10? Five for 13 bucks, 10 for 20 bucks. I use those an awful lot for bias, so I'm going to order some extra. And all these savings will get passed to the clients. Now here on the uh, 2 watt 470 ohms, I need five because I'm doing five amps. And the price there is now $1.85. If I do 10, which would be the next tier, 208. So for 15 cents, I get twice as many. It's going to be the same here. Where I need I need 10, so let's go ahead and order 10. And on this one, I need 5. And I know it's going to drop down again to the lower tier. So for all these 2-watt uh, Pro 2s that I use all the time, I'm ordering 10 of them, even if I only need 5 right now immediately. On some things, I'll go in here and I'll change it to 100. So it's from 226, so 22 cents each. If I change it to 100, it goes to uh, a, a, you know 12 cents each. So 1220. But uh, I don't uh, need to have huge quantities of everything. Uh, let's see, 70 cents each on the 470 ohms versus 48 cents each. So 10 for 480 versus I would need, uh, well, I need 10 of them, but versus two, $1.40. That's nice. So yeah, let me change that to 10. $1.40 for two, 480 for 10. That, yeah, I can't argue with that. These caps here are for the next section of the video for things I wanted to talk about. This one says 0.22 microfarad though. And I was pretty sure I had 0.022. Yeah, 0.022. Let me make sure that I chose the correct thing. Sometimes uh, on any site, it's not just Mauser, but uh, sometimes things can be misdescribed. 22 nanofarad, 0.022. Let's see. Exactly the same thing, only one's an ammo pack and one's bulk. So, okay, I've got the right thing. It's a typo in the description as opposed to a uh, an error. 
So that gets my bulk pricing point across pretty well. You can really save a lot of money, especially on, you know, like half watt uh, carbon film resistors. They can go from 14 cents each to like four cents each. Next, let's talk about some bigger issues like these huge $11 each dual 50 microfarad 500 volt caps we use in Marshalls. You know, that's just a ridiculously large thing. They're physically huge. They're very expensive. Um, and they're kind of outdated. You know, even these FNTs about as good as it gets these days. That's a dual 16 in the photo. That's only 450. That The dual 50 is 500. But uh, there are much better capacitors available today. Now, I'm not saying you need to put a modern cap in all your old apps. But if you're designing a Marshall today, why design around this old technology? We can go here to Mauser and call up this uh, Nishikon radial. And this Nishikon radial is 282 if you buy one. So $2.82 versus almost $11. It's physically very small. Uh, it really performs well. It's 16 millimeters diameter, 40 millimeters long, seven and a half millimeters lead spacing. It's one of the standards. It's rated for 12,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. It's got great specs in every way. This is a better quality capacitor than any multi-section ca can cap ever made. The issue when using parts like this or other radial parts, we'll talk about this in a moment, is that the temptation is to say, well, all the parts are physically smaller so I can put them really close together, whereas on an old Fender eyelet board or an old Marshall tag board or most of the Marshall PCBs, which were laid out to in the 70s and early 80s to emulate the layout of an old um, turret board, because of the physical size of turrets and eyelets, all the components had to be a certain distance from each other, like three-eighths of an inch is a typical spacing. And so you have space between your components. And that space between components can be very important. I don't know how far down this rabbit hole to go, but when you have two components very close to each other, two wires touching, you can have interference from them. And there's a logarithmic scale that if you separate those wires by a quarter inch, then the interaction and noise goes down you separate them by a half an inch, the noise goes down like 10 times more. I'm, I'm, I'm fudging the numbers to get the point across, but it's, it's, a, it's a thing. You can look it up and get the actual numbers. As a concept, it's important. So the more space you have between components, the less interaction, the less they're going to have noise fields that affect each other, the less you're going to have bleed, intermodulation, distortion, etc. And so if you have these physically smaller components, yes, you could cram them right next to each other. But if you give them just a little more space, they'll behave beautifully. They will, you will really get the benefit and they'll run cooler. Now I chose this Nishikon 500 volt 47 microfarad that's equivalent to the 50 microfarad per section of uh, the FNT because that's the, the direct one-to-one -one comparison. But you could also choose smaller 350 volt caps to use for the four caps in the Marshall that are used in series. You could. Well, the four caps in the Marshall and series are dual section 50, but you could use a hundred microfarad Nishikon or Panasonic or Rubicon or United ChemCon. Any of the cons are good and Panasonic is good. Uh, you could use a hundred microfarad, 400 volts for those. And then where Marshall does separate and not have them in parallel. So you have discrete 50 microfarad sections. You could use individual 47 microfarad, 500 volt caps, 450 volt caps, have a much better capacitor that's going to last a lot longer, give you much better control of your grounds, and, uh, you know, it's going to cost an awful lot less. Let's go back to CE, and we're going to talk about some other similar issues. Now, down here, let's see, uh, you can see I've got the, the Vichy uh, MKT 1813s I chose in yesterday's video for that Marshall, the uh, 100 nanofarad and the 22 nanofarad. The 22 nanofarad quantity of six is eight dollars and seventy cents. Here are some orange drops that people like to use. Quantity six, same value, 22 microfarad or 20 microfarad. So 690 for the orange drop, uh, 600 volt polyester versus 870 for the Vichy's. 1314 for the 600 volt 715 P's. 1050 for the 716 P 600 volts. 
There's also a 400 volt 715P series. Those 400 volt caps are the ones that Macy uses and they often have more than 400 volts across them and so they fail, but they're physically very large. So uh, two things I want you to remember. In a lot of the old amps, the Marshalls, the Fenders, etc., the original caps were polyester, not polypropylene. You can use polypropylene if you want. I don't, I don't care. But if you want something more close to the original sound, the polyester is the way to go. And the polyesters, for, for whatever reason, tend to cost a little bit less than the polypropylenes. Polypropylene caps have fantastic specs. And if I were designing something to go on a satellite or to building a, a hi-fi, I might choose them. But in a guitar amp, the little distortions that we like, you know, it's nice to use the same components and materials whenever possible or as close as possible. That's not an argument against using modern electrolytic caps. It's just saying, okay, polyester in certain conditions produces different distortions than polypropylene. But anyway, so we have these great big orange drops that people are familiar with. They're radial caps. They're usually uh, misused in an axial uh, capacity. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me uh, open up the Vichy in a new tab and I'll open up one of the orange drops in a new tab. All right, so this uh, Vichy is an axial cap. And most of you will know this, but by that it means that the all the leads go out of the cap in an, on the same axis. So if you're putting this on an eyelet board, it will span the eyelet without any stress at the point where the lead joins the capacitor. If you're putting this on a Marshall style PCB, the caps are small where the leads need to bend to go down into the PCB. They're going to be fairly well away from the body, maybe over here or over here. So you're not going to stress that connection to, from the lead to the body. The issue, let me go to the uh, orange drop, is that these orange drops are radial caps and they're designed to go into eyelets, turrets, or PCB holes that are directly beneath each lead. And we, we, what we do, we put them in old fenders. So the first thing you do is you straighten out this kink and you bend it at a right angle so the leads go out. Oops. So the leads go out in this direction and this direction. And that puts a lot of stress right here where the lead leaves the body of the capacitor and that epoxy coating can break, uh, which can let moisture in. Second of all, they're physically a much larger, denser, heavier caps with more mass. And they are going to be more prone to vibration as a result. And they're going to put more stress on the lead cap body junction as a result because the, the, it's rare to have the body of the cap actually supported against the board, whereas the axles will do that. So I, I'm not a big fan of using radial caps like this in an old existing app that was designed for axles. I will do it from time to time, and I, you know, I won't necessarily automatically remove it, but it's never been a really good choice. On that note of good choices for capacitors, here I've got the MKT1813, and here I've got a WEMA MSK, which is one of their polyester caps, and here I've got a Panasonic ECQ. I'm going to open these all up in tabs. The, the Vichy here is, of course, an axial cap with a terrible graphic from Mauser. And it has pretty good specs. It's 630 volts, 22 microfarad. Here's the dimensions. It's rated for up to 220 volts AC. Uh, it's uh, 100 degrees Celsius rated, has a 10% tolerance. Um, lasts uh, 300,000 hours, they're saying. And that's at 100 degrees or down at negative 55. Uh, you don't want to be experiencing the weather on those days where this cap is going to be stressed. So it's still a very good capacitor, but it is an axial capacitor, which has benefits to old amps, as I've discussed, but very few things other than amplifiers are still designed using axial capacitors. As a result, not that many are made in the grand scheme of things because every other industry has gone to radials. Now, wait, you said, you just said radials can be bad in old amps. Well, yeah, they are, or they can be. But most modern things use PCB, where a radial is perfect. So this uh, MKT1813 sounds great. It's relatively expensive, $1.81 for one. If I go to this WEMA, it's $0.59 cents for one. If I go to this Panasonic, it's $0.47 cents for one. Now, if you're doing a PCB-designed app, like a SIR 
and you use this WEMA, which is a really nice capacitor. Uh, that's a 47 nanofarad in the picture, but I've chosen a 22. It can be populated, you know, auto-populated by machines. It wants to sit down flush against the board. It doesn't have any weight, doesn't have any mass. It's inexpensive. And let's look at the specs. It is very, they call it, there is polyethylene uh, uh, terephthalate, PET. That's a their version of polyester. Uh, it's rated for 400 volts AC. Not that we do a lot of AC stuff here. It's rated for up to 125 degrees Celsius. This thing, by every measurement, is actually a better capacitor than the MKT-18. It costs less, and it sounds very similar. I would happily design a new PCB-designed amp using one of these, and I've used them a lot, and I've used the 63-volt and lower-voltage versions and pedals over the years. Kemet also makes some really nice stuff. And another capacitor that I love, because it's kind of dual-purpose, is the Panasonic ECQ series. It can be used as a radial, straight down into a PCB, or you can design a turret board to accept these without doing any radical bends because uh, these come in like seven and a half, 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters, 15 millimeter spacing. So you can actually uh, use turrets to, to accommodate that if you, if you plan for it. Um, you can also use them in an old fender if you wish. They're a little easier to bend than a 715, 716p uh, orange drop. They, they're still not the first choice because of that same issue of bending here at the right angle part. Uh, but uh, they're, they're very flexible for a lot of different amp designs. They're very inexpensive. They sound fantastic. And they also have very good specs. These are rated to 105 degrees Celsius, but down to negative 40 only. So it'll still work for your beach party and Antarctica. Just don't leave it out for too many nights. Uh, other than that, it's a fantastic capacitor that's only 47 cents. So if you're designing a new amp, you can go full PCB, in which case the Wema is a great choice. And these Panasonic still work. And one of the nice things is these are standardized sizes for the radial caps. So if you are designing an app and you want to use Wema and for whatever reason it is out of stock, there's a Kimmet that will fit that same space, which is also high quality. This Panasonic would, would drop in. But with these Panasonic leads, you have the flexibility to also use eyelet or turret if you design the board for it. And in a pinch, you can make these work on existing eyelet boards. I, I have certainly done it. Though my preference for an old Fender eyelet board or an old Marshall turret board remains axial for the reasons I've covered. So I'm going to remove these from the cart because I'm not actually ordering them for this project. I just wanted to have them in the cart as a shortcut to get them up on the screen for you guys. And I have here, let's see, this was so I could do comparison. Let me rem I'll remove these two. Sorry, doing a little housekeeping while I have you on the on the line. Oh God. CE site is so slow, I'll remove those other two. So at CE six of the MKT 1813s are is eight dollars and seventy cents. At Mauser six is ten dollars and eighty six cents. What happens if I go to ten, to 10 of them? So from 1086 to 1360, not really worth it. So back to back to six. So the, the, the pricing thing doesn't always work in our favor. And I will not be actually ordering these other um, electrolytics here either. Though I did want to uh, make the point, uh, the same point really, I don't need to go in as much length here, uh, that uh, the... Uh, radial, sorry, the axial electrolytics that we have to use in old fenders like this, Vichy, uh, which is a really nice capacitor. There are very few axial electrolytics being made these days because we're one of the only industries that use them. So again, uh, 22 microfarad, 63 volt cap is $1.69 each versus a radial equivalent Here's a 100 volt 22 microfarad Nishikon rated for 12,000 hours. 50 cents each when you order six. If I ordered 10, 33 cents each. So we are, as guitarists who have old amps, we are paying the, uh, the price of, have, of having old axials everywhere. Axials and the multi-section can caps are 
extremely artificially expensive. That's why when I see amps like the SIRS, all radial, and Friedman had a mixture of radial and axial, seems to be moving entirely just towards the radial for the same reasons I've pointed out here, like his new Plex. These are really good things. And it kills me when I see reviews of these products where someone says, it looks like a damn computer. No, it looks like a really intelligent design that's giving the buyer a much higher quality component at a much lower price. It drives me bonkers watching uninformed reviews of this stuff. Anyway, I'm not trying to hold myself up as like the guy. There are a lot of techs out there who know all the stuff who could have done this video for you. But they did not. It, you're stuck with me. So you get my voice saying these things. But they are true not because I'm saying them. I'm saying them because they are true. Now let me uh, clear out some stuff from my, my cart I don't actually need. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. I'm, I'm to, I need to call the owner of that uh, Super Reverb that has that busted RCA jack and ask him if he wants me to just change the one or if you'd like four new ones, so they'll all be shiny and, and good. And, uh, oh, just in case you're curious, if you have a busted bright switch on your old Fender amp on the front panel, the switch that fits is sold by Switchcraft. It's sold as this Jazzmaster Jaguar switch. It's really, um, exact size you need is just a d double pole, double throw, as opposed to a single pole, single throw. So, you know, it's a good, good switch and it exactly is what you need but it's just not labeled anywhere as for fender amps so there's your bonus material of the day anyway i hope this has been helpful and ha hope it hasn't been too boring and i hope it won't be too difficult to edit thanks for watching